Hey, greetings traders. You know I had the trading room closed this morning, so I wanted, now that I'm back in the seat, to give you my read on today's action because there were some notable, let's just say, um, changes that I'm spying now that month end is over. And I might add that we closed the largest uh, percentage gain in the SPX since 1986. And Farmer's Almanac, if you will, um, has a statistical average of closing, 70% chance of closing below the open in August, um, as well as September. So a big change where you typically uh, trade up and higher into July and then choppy to lower in August with continuation drawdown in September, October. So we had a notable change, that's the first thing, and we can uh, you know, attribute that to the crazy run up from, uh, they are you know, giving credit to the Robin Hooders, if you will, I'm definitely not thinking it's that obvious, but the five for one split that helped this um, throw up higher, and that's not the only thing. Ever since um, the commission war, and the brokerage houses basically said, okay, no commissions. This is actually when um, Tesla in particular took off. But that aside, it is up a whopping 700% since the March lows. Um, I'm not calling a top. I am actually calling the volatility in NASDAQ is percolating. And I wanted to show you that chart. And that would indicate to me that we could be seeing a blow off top soon in Tesla and in Apple, Apple, even though I understand and completely agree that there's no reason to right now short, but I'm looking for inflection points. I'm looking at Zoom after hours, which of course had a blowout earnings, not a surprise. It has been a fabulous trade since this 10 week tag and trend line. So we have lots and lots of speculation long. Um, the top calls from last week, many of which were growth names, all did well. We'll go over those briefly. And then, of course, some that I had mentioned later last week are also doing well. The safety trade is just not in play. The value trade is not in play. But what I'm looking for for that rotation is going to be more on the volatility index. So we have right now VIX, which is not looking very exciting, but it is actually under the surface a big whopping character change. So I'm not quite sure if this is going to, you know, end up being an inverse head and sh shoulder on an hourly. We're definitely starting to percolate um, higher. And if we do get above this 29 area, it's going to be eventful. But I'm not using VIX per se. There still is the advantage to the short sellers. Um, basically uh, expecting that this futures price in VIX, which is highly elevated, um, over spot, again, election um, risk that is being bid up in a big way. So that front month, if you will, uh, M2 is way above spot, higher than ever. In other words, it is at 100% current percentile rank. This is very, very unusual. So it has never been this high. Um, so therefore, the support has been to continue to suppress volatility and short volatility. But I'm seeing a character change in this one particular index in particular, which is volatility of NASDAQ. As Apple and Tesla, um, Amazon, oh my, have continued to rise, so has volatility of NASDAQ. So if you can see this, this is a Bollinger Band which in particular is getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And when this blows, this will be a very eventful short, meaning it has a squeeze potential. Yes, it can tag here and then come back down. And that's, you know, ultimately what the short um, volatility sellers are expecting. But I'm saying world of pain if they're wrong. So Anything can happen. VIX can actually rise up to the futures price versus the futures coming down to spot. Um, either one is a possibility. And although the uh, 
the, the puts, if you will, are being bought still in size on VIX. I'm looking at the volatility of NASDAQ going, this doesn't look good. So above here is a world of pain. Don't laugh. I can see volatility of NASDAQ getting up to this area. When Tesla, not if, when Tesla reverses, when a Apple reverses, um, it could be Buffett, it could be China retaliation, it could be rates, whatever. Buffett, by the way, owns a million shares. Um, I forget how many uh, Swiss National Bank owns, but the point is, this is percolating. It's a very different change of character now that it's above, and this is really important, it's above these moving averages. And I said, watch out. If we close above 31, which we did last week on a Thursday, and Friday, this is a two-bar reversal. If it got above and we get and stay above 35, we're going to have risk off. So unless this comes crashing back down and this is a fake breakout, I'm going to err on the path of higher for volatility of NASDAQ. So some of the plays last week um, had some continuation. I just want to go over those real quick because they were kind of uh, interesting from Tuesday. And I did a video and I sent that out. But if you recall, I said Starbucks looked fabulous. Well, that is also um, Bollinger Band squeeze got going. It got above 80 and has continued. Also, Crowd, which has earnings into this week, uh, looked absolutely fabulous with this 10-week. Obviously, it pushed through the trend line and has continued higher. Been fabulous with other security plays, right? Um, not so much Okta, but definitely ZS. And now MDB is, is pushing higher. Zoom, of course, has been a running commentary of higher, 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 especially with COVID um, uh, causing cancellations at colleges, etc. So SMAR was one that we caught live in the trading room. Also, I love this morning star reversal, and it just did an awesome job. It's one of uh, the few tech companies, actually, that Druckenmiller um, owns. So that was one I was keyed in on because of that uh, pattern, but also that provider. GoGo -Go took off. Finally, that's an IPO laggard, and it did tag a price target and sell. Um, so that position is closed. I may go back into it another time. Shaq was a gorgeous continuation above the 200-day, and then it broke through this 63 and continued. It's just funny how all of these um, worked. Uh, DKNG worked for initially, and then it has come back in. LCA worked very well from that to that 17 and then came back in. Uh, GPS Retail and other plays came right up into the trend line from this 14 and a half. Beautiful. ANF was another one that I really liked up to the 50 week or the 200 day. Um, NEO, even though it came down two days after breaking higher, we caught that from 15 to 21. Look at the, how it tagged the 21 day and then bounced. And SPWR continued um, to surprise. It also did a, a split. But I've got to redo this um, chart. But it had basically a trend line here. And then it, of course, shot higher. And it's been doing really well. Roku on Friday would have been another fabulous play. It, uh, price target has been 176.55. And I had mentioned early on 157 to 165 to 176. And this triggered on Wednesday, then digested Thursday. Friday it broke out and it was up, no joke, 2,000% if you played a lotto um, for last week into that trend line. And then of course, it over. this is, if you look, the daily, that's the weekly. And it tagged the weekly pretty much perfectly, 177 and a half, overshot by $1. And then look at that, boom, came right back in and now it's digesting again. So those continued to look fabulous. Today, finally, I would say GME launched officially. So it got up here, but needed to get above 510, toying, toying, oh, now it's above, now it's really above. And then it took off today. I think that still can go higher. PD, one of a laggard um, IPO plays that I really like, is now intonating higher. It has earnings in two days. Um, along with Cloudera, another one I really like for this scoop pattern, and Chewy. So these are not new. These are ones that I have been continuing to like, especially after that sideways digestion breakout, which was a gap, quick gap fill, and then higher. So 
Chewy has earnings next week. Um, Cloudera has earnings in two days along with PD. All three of those look great. Smar had continuation today. Um, Snap, right here at this 21, it is now kind of trying to move, but I think that's going to be choppy and not quite ready. Same thing with Twitter. It did a good job of getting to 4080, but hasn't cleared. It's going sideways, and uh, I still like this as a long-term play. So those are some of the moves. Um, two shorts that I had mentioned in the room as well. One was Lumber Liquidators. Really liked this setup short. I happen to think Lumber is also a short, but it's harder to play the commodity. Anyway, Lumber Liquidators was a fabulous short and a even better one, and I gave credit on my Twitter feed to who um, suggested this idea, has been on this for a while, and I picked up on it and said, hey, this he's really good on this fundamental analysis, and he's recommending this short. He's holding firm. He actually covered today. He has some puts still, but that is down 100 points since when I spied that, um, and there are good reasons, more than 100 points. Um, Mass Attorney General is uh, suing uh, Credit Acceptance Corp. So that kind of came through. Some random stuff. And I got to tell you, I'm fascinated with value, the oversold value stuff. Fossil, look at this beauty that has continued to absolutely perform extremely well. Now it's right up to the 50, as well as Tupperware. Remember, we've been watching this one as well. Digest and then pop, stayed inside, inside day today. It absolutely tagged. Perfectly 1641 and looks like it has more to go with GME, which launched. Um, the only thing I'm really interested in right now is tracking very, very closely what happens with VXN. And you already know my thesis. This is going higher. Um, grabbed some VXX calls again because my calls triggered, um, tagged, and closed on Thursday. And then Friday was an inside day, and today just looked like it was going to percolate again. So that's one big important level of NASDAQ volatility. And the second would be the yields. So there's still, look at this crossover, the 10 and 21 on a weekly. I really think this is productive. It hit the 100 day and pulled back. It looks like, oh no, TLT is going higher, and yet look what it did, got rejected. So I'm still looking at TLT as a sideways to lower bet, TNX, 10-year, higher. What has, of course, um, gone against me is the gold and silver trade. Silver absolutely percolated higher on this trend line wedge. Um, came back in, and I said in the room, I had the room open on Thursday, it has to get below 25 to be a short, otherwise it's going to continue higher, and that's exactly what it's doing. So this is monthly it already filled that gap by tagging 27, and then it came down, and lower high came down. So, so far, this is still a lower high, but not by much. So, I will admit this is looking more bullish, but I'm going to give it a few more days because GDX hasn't cleared, because gold hasn't had so much of a follow-through. But all of that looks bullish with Bitcoin Trust. But again, they're just intonating higher. I'm going to give them a few more days since I'm short the gold and silver complex. I would like to re-enter um, Bitcoin, gold, and silver, but I think they have more to fall. So right now, just waiting to see how the market digests this incredible run um, in the NASDAQ in the light of the month end and volatility of NASDAQ looking very, very bullish, and I am not expecting um, any fireworks as far as, uh, uh, you know, economic data, doing a rug pull. I don't have anything this week since it's going to be a, as far as news that I'm expecting to change the flavor, if you will. Uh, but this is the end of the month today. It is absolutely a slow week with Labor Day weekend coming up before really, let's call it the A-team, comes back to work um, in September. I think that's when we get a real follow-through with volatility. But for right now, I just wanted to send out this quick video with an update since I did have the trading room closed this morning. And I will be around uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Archana is also teaching her class. Um, and I wish you a great afternoon. Thank you very much for your patience while I had a few days of... Uh, 
um, break, especially during the summer trading uh, volumes, which have been totally, insanely uh, slim, with the exception of option flow, which has been beyond excited, and I think that that's going to continue, but they're moving from major momentum to the next major momentum to the next major momentum, and at some point, with a potential pop higher in yields, we should get that rotation into value. That's my thesis going into Q4. We're not quite there yet, <laughs> so stick with me. We'll figure out what we see um, in coming days, and I wish you a great evening. Bye-bye.